Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies and welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. Today, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to discuss with you is why simulation needs to be one of the first things you do. When we think about, when most motorsport teams and most motorsport competitors think about simulation, they like to think of it as, you know what? We can see the benefit of it, but you know what? It's a nice optional extra that we'll get to. And also too, you also get some elements of motorsport that also think, hey, you know what? We can see the benefit of it. However, this is the exclusive preserve of F1 and P1 teams because you need to have about 500 degrees in rocket science to drive it effectively. And then there's, of course, the other bit of motorsport who thinks that simulation tools are the spawn of the devil and that we really shouldn't be bother uh, be bothering with it because it's irrelevant and it doesn't work well ladies and gentlemen nothing can be further from the truth because i can tell you right now if you're serious about getting the most out of your race car simulation actually needs to be one of the first things you do and here's why because nothing and i mean nothing will help you quantify your car like simulating it. Because here's the deal. What it gives you is it gives you the platform and tools to engineer the car as opposed to guessing. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is something really, really powerful because what that gives you is confidence. And what we're going to do is outline in this presentation why that's the case. Okay. First things first, it would be very prudent for me to in, uh, to introduce is where simulation fits into um, the packing order of um, any motorsport operation. Okay, number one, I think this goes without saying, make sure the car isn't falling apart. Having been a veteran of World Time Attack Challenge and having experienced my fair share of cars falling to pieces, I can speak from bitter experience on that one. Secondly, put data logging on the car. Think of this another way. If you're sick, and you go to the doctor without a stethoscope and he's wearing some really, really weird African witch doctor setup, has got a voodoo doll and is waving various body parts all over that voodoo doll for your diagnosis. I can tell you right now, you're going to be heading for the nearest exit. You are going to be going supersonic, heading for the exit, and they'll feel the effect of the sonic boom as you come out. Ditto for, um, uh, di uh, uh, ditto for um, race car simulations. I must admit... One of the things that continues to baffle me on a daily basis is the attitude that most motorsport regulatory authorities have to data logging. I mean, it's that whole thing. You don't walk into a doctor's, uh, you don't walk into a doctor's office without a stethoscope or the appropriate analysis um, uh, tools. And ditto, it just it blows me away why so many people are just so fearful of data logging because, I mean, it's just plain common sense. Anyway, but that can be a subject for another presentation. Number three, you measure up the car. That's really, really important. The reason you measure up the car is, look, you've got to do it anyway for you uh, to get a good handle on things like corner weights, on various other aspects like gear ratios, etc., etc., that you'll need um, in order to do um, good setup sheet practice. So really, it's pretty much the sort of stuff you need to be doing anyway. Once you've done those three things, that's when you move on to simulation. Okay, why sim? Validating suspension geometry. What I'm about to present to you is actually a, a, a little example that um, we present um, during our boot camps. Now, from time to time, you're going to see a situation like this. So here, speed's correlated pretty well. The throttle's pretty good. Um, the rear dampers aren't too bad. Actual is coloured simulated as black. Um, inline, lateral G, uh, inline G and lateral G is all pretty good. But where we're suffering from is, is take a look at what the front pitch is doing. Under brakes, the simulated pitches are going through the roof, but the actual data is staying the same. Now, most people, when they look at a situation like this, We'll just go. Uh, we'll just go. Oh no! This is all terrible. We've just fl we've just flushed fifteen k down the toilet. We just don't know what to do. It's terrible. It's awful, etc., etc. Well, I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that attitude is complete nonsense. What the sim is telling you, ladies and gentlemen, is that something is not adding up, and it's up to you to investigate the difference. Now, 
One of the great things that chassis sim returns to you is it returns all the applied forces to the vehicle. So if you've got good correlation um, in various aspects, in various other aspects of the car's performance, but not so good correlation like we saw in the pitch data, it gives you a fantastic opportunity to really nail down why that is. So here I go through a typical example of how you go about calculating a hand calculation of what your simulated pitches should do. So here are the various parameters and here's how you go about um, calculating it. Now, I'm not going to go through the specifics of this right now because I go through that in greater depth um, in the boot camps where I actually get you to do this. However, the moral of the tale here is that the great thing about when you look at a simulation result like this is by using the applied forces that are returned from chassis sim you can go through and calculate this and see if it makes sense. Now, here's the takeaway, ladies and gentlemen. If the, simula if the hand calc matches up to what the simulated dumb changes was, do uh, was doing, which is exactly what happened in this particular change, the data and the simulation has just told you there's something in the car that's not adding up and you need to chase it down. Ladies and gentlemen, this sort of stuff is absolutely invaluable. And might I just say completely congruent to best race engineering practices anyway. So here's the $64,000 question. Or should I say, in a lot of cases, the $64 million question. Why would you leave home without it? Moving on, classifying tyres. Now, one of the great things that you can get away, uh, that you can get from simulation in particular, um, in uh, particular for chassis sim because of the tyre force molding toolbox, is that you can quantify this cur curve. Now, think of this curve for um, the traction circle radius versus load properties as sort of like the tyre equivalent of the quarter car damper of the quarter car damper model. It's a really great little metric to understanding what your tyres are doing. So, effectively, this equation equation which describes the traction circle radius versus load characteristics of the tyre, which might I just say is the soul of the tyre. Uh, what we've got here is we've got any tyre can be classified in terms of its peak load and the initial coefficient of friction times the peak load divided by two. Now, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, this is all great and it's all good for, um, it's all great for nice simulation correlation, but how the hell do I actually use this? Here's why. The first thing you get from this is it gives you the ability to plot lateral load transfer versus force. But what it also does is it allows you to plot stability index versus lateral load di uh, distribution. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, that graph there and the, gra and, uh, the graph preceding it is what I refer to as the race engineering mechanical load balance equation. And the way that you can get this and determine it is by knowing what that is. Because once you've got that, this and this falls into place. And that just comes out of the wash from simulation. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That now gives you the ability to engineer the car and engineer a setup as opposed to guessing. And so the question really to be asked is if you've got access to a tool like this, why the hell wouldn't you use it? It's it's one of these things that it seems uh, that it's it's one of these things that are honestly hit me in the eyeballs about a year or two ago and I never really phrased it that way but ever since I started to phrase it that way it's made sense for a lot of people which is why I've raised it um, uh, which is why I've raised it with you why sim classifying air arrow one of the true beauties about simulation is that part of when you use a simulation is that there is nowhere to hide. Now, one of the great things about that is it forces you to really nail down what's going on with your car. So here's an example of an arrow table that we did for a GT3 car. So as you can see, we've got rear wing angle, we've got total downforce versus total drag versus the arrow balance offset. Now, this sort of stuff is absolute gold dust because now, instead of going, oh, you know what? I feel that this wing is gonna do this or I'm confident that this wing is going to do this. Baloney, all of a sudden, you've now got the ability to nail this down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is something incredibly powerful. So the payoff. 
And in particular, what I talk, what I want to talk to you about is a car that I um, is the car that I engineered um, at World Time Attack Challenge um, at Eastern Creek in October 2016. And in particular, this was the Nick Ashwin um, NA um, Autosport Engineering um, entry. Now, so what we did was that. We set up a model for the world, the world Time Attack Challenge using tyre models that had been generated from previous data, and we used this to call chassis. Uh, we used this to call um, uh, uh, chassis changes, and the result from this, ladies and gentlemen, was going through P17 to P3. It's really interesting that particular race weekend. Really, I often say is 20 years of training that boiled down to two days. If I might paraphrase um, uh, Brigadier, uh, uh, Brigadier General um, Steve Ritchie retired he once said that when he bagged um, his last two MiGs that made him a fighter race he said that seven to eight years of fighter training boiled down to 45 seconds this is a classic case of 20 years of training all the development in terms of understanding how to derive tire models from race data going through and being able to correlate what's actually going on between simulated and race data that all came together to achieve that result and that ladies and gentlemen is why simulation needs to be one of the first things that you do and you are absolutely crazy not to leave home without it so to uh, some takeaways and some food for thought Simulation needs to be one of the first things you do, and here's why. It helps you classify your cars in ways you never thought possible. If I might paraphrase um, Aussie Man Reviews and his critique of uh, Mexican woman Yannette Garcia, where he stated, no one turns left like Yannette Garcia. Well, I can tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, nothing, and I mean nothing, will help you classify what your car is going to do uh, what, uh, as, as simulation can and that and what I just say ladies and gentlemen there's a lot of people and I know a few people will be watching this going yeah but this simulation stuff's all really really good it's all transparent well let's put it this way ladies and gentlemen this is going to be completely transparent with the stuff that you're going to do anyway so why wouldn't you make good use of it the other thing too is it gives you a platform to engineer the car as opposed to guessing and that ladies and gentlemen is something incredibly powerful and in this way simulation is your primary tool to make sense of the data i cannot ram that point home enough that is so so key because it's interesting i mean throughout the chassis sim community i mean the biggest feedback we often get is that we thought you know what we thought we knew what our car did then this came along and what this brings to the party ladies and gentlemen is confidence once you've got that confidence ladies and gentlemen you're no longer going to be guessing but here's the thing ladies and gentlemen i can talk to you about this until i'm blue in the face but it's now for the uh, but for those of you who aren't existing chassis sim who aren't existing chassis sim users and forgive me for chassis sim users who are listening to this it's time for you to take action sign up for our on uh, 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 sign up for our online sim use this for yourself and you can see this for yourself and we'll catch you in the next episode of Dan's vehicle dynamics corner <laughs>